Welcome back! In this video I'm going to talk about a very common issue that is encountered on printed circuit boards that contain high-speed digital circuitry. And this issue is the addition of copper fields on outer layers of a printed circuit board, which is commonly done to reduce the overall impedance of ground or to provide shielding and heat dissipation for signals. However, does it always work this way as intended? Let's take a deep dive. We can begin our conversation by analyzing this LinkedIn post. Please feel free to stop the video and read it fully. Essentially, what the author is getting at is that the PCB designer can accidentally turn a microstrip waveguide into a coplanar waveguide by adding copper fields on the outer edges of the printed circuit board. In fact, this kind of a layout reminds a design technique called grounded coplanar waveguide. However, it is missing one key ingredient, and I'm going to talk about it later. But let's draw a first conclusion, and that is that a designer can indeed influence a trace impedance by adding copper fills on outer layers. However, is this always the case? Let's analyze a typical four-layer printed circuit board with a USB on the top layer. So here we have our typical DP and D and USB traces on top layer, and underneath it we've got a reference plane and the distance between the reference plane and the top layer which is the recommended dielectric space for high-speed PCB layouts. Now let's add copper fields on the top layer left and right of differential traces. So we're going to assume that the designer has calculated trace widths and gaps based on this layer stack up and uh, the formal distance to reference plane. So the typical trace to copper field or polygon clearance is going to be 8 mil. And this is what we're going to assume here. Now when do you think the energy is going to flow if we have an 8 mil distance to the copper field on the top layer and a formal distance to the reference plane underneath the trace. Well, as we learned from Rick Hartley, PCB traces at high speeds act as waveguides and the majority of energy is concentrated in dielectric underneath the trace. Therefore, this is exactly what is going to happen in this case still because the distance to the reference plane is much smaller than the distance to the copper field on top layer. Does it mean that some amount of energy will flow in a tail of a magical unicorn? Maybe. But assuming that unicorns don't actually exist, I think we're safe to assume that all energy will flow in the dielectric between the reference plane and the trace. And this will happen because current always follows the path of lowest impedance. And the there can be only one. So our second conclusion in this video is going to be that the trace impedance is not going to be affected by the copper fields on outer layers as long as the distance to reference plane is smaller than the distance to copper fields. Let's talk about grounded coplanar waveguides a bit more. Previously, I said that there was a one key ingredient missing to make it a grounded coplanar waveguide. And this key ingredient is wires. And the wires are required to present a uniform impedance of the structure. And what we're aiming for in a grounded coplanar waveguide is to create the kind of a shield around the energy underneath the trace. And the trace actually acts as part of this shield. This is a very useful technique for containing RF signals. However, you must have wires for this to work and then you will calculate uh, trace impedance based on ground and coplanar waveguide, which would be quite complicated and we're not going to go into this in this video. But our third conclusion is going to be that an ordinary copper field is not going to act as a grounded coplanar waveguide as long as it doesn't have wires left and right of the trace. So in general, copper fields don't create any issues on a PCB as long as the spacing is adequate. But what are the benefits? Let's look into that as well. Let's imagine two single-ended traces running in parallel on top layer. 
If we look at it at a 90 degrees angle, we can see that it kind of looks like a capacitor. And that makes total sense, because in actual fact they are. And there will always be some degree of capacitive coupling between traces that are running in parallel to each other. In fact, there would be inductive coupling as well. And what it practically means is crosstalk. Crosstalk is especially a common issue on high-speed designs that feature many clock lines, because it is most visible on rising edges of a signal. So if our two single-ended traces running in parallel were in fact clocks beating against each other, we would be in deep trouble. So what can we do to reduce crosstalk on a digital circuit board? Well, I hope you guessed it. We can add some ground between those traces. This technique is called adding guard traces. And it is exactly what it sounds like. Gosh, Alton, it makes it sound like a ground is useful in all layers, not just top and bottom. Well, I'm glad you said that. Because that's exactly what I do on majority of my layouts. On my designs, I fill all unused space with copper and reference it to zero volt. And then I use stitching wires to create a uniform impedance of the resulting structure. And you can do that in Altium Designer by using a wire stitching tool. It's very simple and the only thing you have to do is specify the distance between wires in a grid. Typically I tent my wires so I would take this option as well. I hope this video killed yet another EMC unicorn and it's given you some insights into good design practices for EMC and I'm shortly going to release a Udemy course exactly on this subject. So if you would be interested to take part in trials, please send me a message on LinkedIn and I'll send you some materials to review. For now, please like and subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you soon.